for a question. Um, one that was brought up was the ways in which we've been taught to not recognize um, how, how our lifestyles or how our uses affect, it, affect one another. Um, and I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about um, how systems of power and how privileges um, will affect the way that we, that we are able to build sustainable communities and are able to be responsible to, to one another. Um, and the other question I, uh, I want to ask is, what are your thoughts on, um, I guess, the word that we've done a lot of damage to the earth, and there is only so many, um, so much land, so much water resources, and how do we not recreate um, those power disparities as far as who has the capacity to be sustainable, and how do we not re recreate elitist societies? Mm. So the first question, um, I think gives it white privilege, right? So, so yeah, white men built this system, and, and here I am, a white man, telling you how we should change it. I'd be suspicious right away. I, I, I mean, the, the system is, is totally screwed. And it's a situation that has arisen only within the last few thousand years. For the first two million years of the human experience, we lived light on the land. I think we're headed towards a situation much like that one, much like the Neolithic. I don't think we have the cheap energy requisite to building civilizations again that are manifest with hierarchy. That's all brand new, and, and, and this idea of a 1% as the apex of disparity, economic disparity, is brand new as well. It's difficult for me to imagine that we could create a system worse than this one. So no matter what happens next, I can't imagine, of course, I think that every time we have a presidential election too, it certainly can't get any worse. <laughs> and then, voila! <laughs> So, I've been wrong before. But it's hard to imagine that in the absence of cheap energy, we'll be able to develop a global scale neo-feudal system like we have now. We'll be able to recreate the Middle Ages, maybe. Maybe we'll, we'll create a, a new feudal system in, in the wake at some local level, but I hope not. We don't know. We don't know where we're going, but we get to make that future. So let's make sure we, what, kill all the white guys as a starter? Is that what you're proposing? I mean, really? No, I think you misunderstood my question. I'm asking, I think maybe, maybe I'm just really sensitive. <laughs> with our social justice and how, how to kind of deal with the damage that we've done to one another mm -hmm. and how to build communities that we, where we trust each other. I think you have like the cell phones like, that you mentioned earlier that we don't even, we don't even like, trans, transfer in our brains that our cell phones mean that other people die. And that, yeah, we've been brought up with these weapons. Um, so I guess I'm just wondering if your book addressed anything about building societies in which we learn to be responsible and learn to see the way we affect them. I'm living in an example of that. And whether and how we do that will depend on the local area. So what we do in my community in the southwestern desert, where it has rained 8.1 inches since September 24, 2010, might be a little different than what you do in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan or here in Muskegon. In fact, by definition, it would be different because the materials we need to survive and to thrive are available in different measure and different proportions. I feel like I'm not answering your question again. I'm not really just afraid to give up. No, it's fine. Don't worry. I'll talk to you after. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, um, a, a number of people have um, done the analysis that um, the first mistake we made along the um, path to technological disaster was agriculture. 
um, some 10,000 years ago. Um, and I um, note that your solution um, still involves agricultural, though I also noted that at a certain point in your presentation you mentioned foraging and, and demand for other stuff. Um, I'm just wondering um, if you think that agriculture can be done uh, sustainably. <laughs> no, because agriculture allows civilization to arise and civilizations are not sustainable. And so I'm distinguishing between gardening, which is what permaculture and forest gardening is doing, and what we're doing, a subsistence activity. I'm distinguishing between that and agriculture at scale, which is what I, I think you're thinking about. No, I'm not. I, I'm absolutely not thinking of agriculture. I'm not thinking of, of big agro-industrial agriculture. I'm thinking in terms of 10,000 years ago, the uh, capability of, of um, growing our own food as opposed to foraging for, for food, you know, hunter-gatherer type stuff. Um, a lot of people theorize that that's what, um, in the first place, um, allowed us, uh, allowed our population to overshoot. Absolutely. It definitely did, and that's all about the grains. So growing grain, which can be stored, allows us to herd the people and therefore control them and build civilization. It's, a, it's the ability to store food through seasons that, that that form of agriculture allows. That's not what I'm proposing. That's, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm interested in horticulture, not agriculture. And that's a subsistence gardening effort that involves no storage of grains over time. I absolutely agree that civilization is where overshoot began. And that was a few thousand years ago. It arose many places, more or less simultaneously, around the globe, between six and 10,000 years ago. So I say a few thousand, just as a catch-all. It arose when the climate changed on this planet to allow for growing of grains. 